integral part of the Israeli educational system, is an integral part of the messages that the Israeli media and Israeli politics convey to their own people. And you have to maintain it all the time. But I want to, to say that there's something positive that comes out of it, which sounds crazy because I'm describing to you a powerful state with a military machine, with an ideological infrastructure that is focused solely on the destruction of the indigenous people of Palestine. The people of Palestine who don't have a strong alliance behind them. And a state of eliminatory policies that has a strong alliance behind it. From the United States, through multinational cooperation, through military industry, security firms, mainstream media and mainstream academia. So we're talking about something that almost not sounds hopeless and depressing because you have these uh, uh, international immunity to the policies of elimination that began from the early stages of Zionism until today and we're seeing probably the worst chapter on the Israeli attempt to push forward eliminatory policies to a new kind of level in, into uh, a much more concentrated effort of killing thousands of people in a short period of time like they have never dared to do uh, before. So why is it, wh where do you see the, the positive side of it, what one can ask? And I think what is so important is that the way you need to maintain the dehumanization in order to justify the elimination of another people is not a basis for a nation state in the future. And we, can, we saw it even before the 7th of October. Take out the project of the elimination of the Palestinians. And you ask yourself, what unites the people who see themselves as Jews in the state of Israel? What keeps them together if you take out the Palestinian issue? If you take out the idea that we need to be united because we, we are fighting this native people. We need to complete the project of displacement, of replacement. Take it out, and what you get is what you saw on the streets of Tel Aviv in Jerusalem uh, uh, on the 6th of October. Huge demonstrators, demonstrations between secular Jews, those who describe themselves as secular Jews, mostly of European origin, believing that it's possible to create a democratic, pluralistic state while maintaining the occupation mm -hmm. and the apartheid towards the Palestinians inside Israel. Struggling with a messianic new kind of Zionism that developed in the uh, settlements, what I call the state of Judea, that suddenly appeared in our uh, uh, midst, and believing that they have now a way of creating a kind of a Zionist theocracy with no consideration for democracy or international uh, uh, immunity for Israel and believing that uh, this is the only way to create a Jewish state in the future. There's nothing in common between these two visions apart from one thing. Both camps don't care about the Palestinians. Both camps believe that the uh, the survival of Israel depends on the continuation of the elimination policies towards the Palestinians. This is not going to hold water. This is going to, this is going to disintegrate and implode from within because you cannot really keep in the 21st century a, a state and a society on the basis that what keeps people together or a sense of belonging is being part of an eliminatory genocidal uh, project. It can work for some, definitely, but it cannot work for everyone. And we have seen already the indication before the 7th of October how uh, Israelis who have opportunities in other places in the world due to their dual nationality, due to their profession, due to their financial abilities, are thinking loud and clear of relocating both their money and their stem, themselves outside of the state of Israel. And what you will be left with is a society that is e 